Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11 and welcome back to the channel. Well guys, today we're going to do a, t a quick uh, tabletop review here of the Taurus PT1911 uh, 45 ACP pistol. Um, this pistol is on is on loan to me from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Uh, guys, as you know, uh, SS Pond has been a longtime supporter of the channel. Stan loans me firearms from his private collection and uh, I do tabletop reviews and range tests and cleaning videos and so on. And uh, go ahead and show a little bit of support for SS Pond by giving them a call. They've got great prices. They've got a great selection. And uh, SS Pond will take care of all of your firearms needs. All right, so real quick here, let's just go ahead and get the uh, specifications out of the way so we can tell you what you need to know, the vital statistics about this gun, uh, before we talk about the experience of shooting it and just uh, how it handled and how it performed, etc. So what we're looking at here, guys, is the Taurus PT 1911 45 ACP pistol. This one has the dual tone or duo tone finish or two tone finish, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is a blued frame with a stainless steel slide that does have some bluing going on in between your serrations, which is really cool. Got the nice polished stainless steel up on the top. Um, it does have a 5 inch barrel with an overall length of 8.5 inches and a weight of 38 ounces. It is a hefty gun, it is a full size pistol and it does work really well. Um, you've got 3 dot uh, Novak uh, style or Novak brand uh, sights up on the top. Um, I do believe that these are not night sights. Uh, you do have an 8 plus 1 capacity and you do get uh, two magazines in the box. Now let's go ahead and check out the box and see what you actually get with the pistol when you buy it. All right, so this pistol does have a date of something something 2009 on the back. It's got a piece of tape that's partially torn off. 12 22 2009. So I'm going to guess that's when this purchase was this pistol was purchased. I don't know about the necessarily the the manufacturer date. It does come with a nice hard plastic case. Uh, it is a generous size case. It's you can carry quite a few different items in here. Got some good foam lining going on. Uh, let's see. We've got your regular manual. We've got your warranty card. We do have a cleaning brush that comes along with the pistol, which is always a bonus. Now, I don't know if these items are still included in the newer versions of the PT-1911s, because sometimes as time goes on, uh, you do tend to lose some of these accessories and items. Now, this is one of those things that you definitely need to look for um, if you get the Taurus PT-1911. Make sure you've got the Brazilian bottle opener. I'm just kidding, guys. This is your barrel bushing tool. This makes disassembly and reassembly much, much easier. Um, I did not notice this when I was doing my cleaning video, and I struggled quite a bit to get the gun reassembled. Part of it is just the fact that I'm somewhat an experience of 1911s. I had one for a short period of time. I've only disassembled and cleaned them probably five or six times total. So this little tool really makes life a lot easier. Make sure you have that in the box if you buy one. Um, you do get the two magazines with it. Unfortunately, as you're going to find out in the range test, this magazine does have a kink in it. I'm not sure if somebody tried to widen the feed lips on it and bent it, but this magazine did have some issues no matter what I tried to run through it. I just could not get that magazine to run correctly. Um, this also has the original um, grip panels that came with the gun. They're just a polymer grip panel. And I I believe there may be a cherry wood grip panel that's on the pistol right now. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, these are the original polymer uh, grip panels. It just says made in Brazil. You should be able to run any standard 1911 grip panels on it. Now, I'm a bit of a 1911 noob in terms of like, you know, variations in the series or if there's a mod one, a mod two, a mod three, stuff like that. Um, I mean, I do know the difference between, you know, commander style, officer style, range master, all that fun stuff, and your standard size pistol. Um, you do have a couple of the keys for the Tor security system, which interestingly, interestingly enough, the new PT, uh, I'm sorry, what is that? Yeah, the PT 111 G2s, they are taking the security system off of it and they're renaming that gun the G2C. So we might be seeing this security system disappearing from future models of Taurus pistols, which some people like and some people dislike, but that's just the way things are going. So this is what you get in the box and uh, let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, before we do any kind of tabletop review, we want to make sure that the pistol is in fact unloaded. So let's just go ahead and double check. Even though I just cleaned it a couple days ago, it's always good to be safe. So magazine is clear. Check the chamber. Chamber's clear. We're good to go. All right, so front to back. Um, you know what? Let's, let's just go ahead and talk about the basic features, and then we'll get into the shooting experience of it, uh, what you need to know about it. First of all, the construction, it's very robust. It does feel very heavy duty underneath the hood when I took the gun apart. The machining was actually very well done. Uh, I don't know exactly how many rounds were put through this pistol, but it did hold up really well at the range. Now, some of the features you need to know about, we do have the front serrations. If you're somebody that likes to do a press check, you have that as an option, although it's kind of hard on a pistol like this to do so. Um, you do have an ambidextrous safety. All right, you do have one on each side, which is always a bonus. Um, we do not have an ambidextrous magazine release, although I don't think you'd be able to reverse it looking at the way that it's cut out in the frame. You're pretty much stuck with that. So if you're a lefty, at least you've got that support that you need if you want to use the mechanical safety. Um, you've also got, like I said, these Novak or Novak style sights up on the top, three dot sights. 
Uh, one thing about these sites, they're very generous, they're very easy to use, they're nice, they're very robust, but I think they maybe cause the pistol to shoot a little bit low. I practically had to have the front sight up over the top of the bullseye of the target just to get the target, just to get the bullets to hit the bottom of the bullseye itself, if that makes sense. So I think these really tall sights, as, long as, as well as just kind of a tall profile in general, might have been causing the pistol to shoot a little bit low. I mean, I literally had to really hold up on it, which no big deal. Every gun is kind of unique in the way that it patterns when you shoot it. You've also got your regular full-size slide stop. Again, if you're a fan of the 1911, you're probably familiar with a lot of these design features. Um, you've also got this extended beaver tail off the back, which I really do like. You've got a lightened trigger, which is nice, or a skeletonized trigger. And you've also got yourself a lightened hammer. You know, so the gun does have uh, somewhat of a customized look to it, which is pretty cool. I love the two-tone finish personally. Now, remember these grips? I believe that these are aftermarket. There's nothing on the literature that I found about the pistol that says that the uh, the wood grips are, are stock that come with it, but they are Taurus grips. And so, you know, if you buy the Taurus grips, you know for a fact that they're going to fit so long as it says it's made for that model. Um, one thing about the slide, you either love it or hate it. Taurus tends to put a lot of markings on the slides of their older guns. Uh, for some people, it doesn't bother them. For other people, it just kind of annoys them a little bit. So you want to kind of, eh, you're going to either love it or hate it. Um, Taurus is starting to pull some of those markings off their slides on their newer pistols that are coming out. They're going with a more simplified naming system. And so I think that's probably going to, uh, oh, maybe reduce some of that that you see on the sides. But I know some people really complain about it. Got great checkering on the grips. They are very easy to get a good purchase on the gun and hold on to. Um, you do have this uh, checkered front strap on the pistol grip itself, which is really nice. Again, the, the checkering is very well done on it, as well as on the reverse too, you've got a slightly different texture, but also a very aggressive checkering on the back. And the uh, beaver tail safety has a nice generous cut on it too. So I mean, overall, you're getting a gun that, that really does handle well. Um, let's just go and talk about performance at the range. If you look in the uh, lower left-hand corner, you'll see how I was shooting the pistol. I was actually shooting a really good group with it. I was comfortable with it. It was shooting well. We had very few issues at all. Uh, with the original magazine. Now with the second magazine, I kept having jamming issues, so I just went back to the first, which meant that I was limited to 8 plus 1 in the shooting. Uh, shoot a little bit of steel. It did shoot really well also. No problems whatsoever. Very minimal recoil. Very comfortable gun to use. And it, it really would make a, almost like a nice beginner pistol for somebody who wants a nice around the house gun. I don't necessarily know about concealing, but you know, with the right holes and the right apparel, um, anything is possible as well as with your body type. Uh, you might be the kind of person that can conceal a full, uh, full size pistol such as this one. It is a very hefty pistol, like we said before, 38 ounces. Um, the trigger, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with your 1911 style triggers, but they're very, very short pull. Really can't do much of a, a reset for you just because of the style, the single action style that we have here. But I mean, you've got maybe about a quarter inch of play when you feel the resistance. And that's it, it goes. Very light trigger. In fact, kind of caught me off guard with the first couple shots that I did. I wasn't expecting it. Um, but I mean, overall, you seem to be getting yourself a, a really good package. Um, now let's go and check the, uh, the retail price on this pistol. And we'll kind of let you know what you're looking at uh, if you were to look around online. Okay, so MSRP on this pistol is $692, and the prices of the Taurus PT 1911s, they vary, where, they vary anywhere between about $609 and $692 for the MSRP. Um, the actual out-the-door price on this gun, if I were to buy it from SS Pond today, would be $621. Now, that includes... Man, what are we looking at here? Uh, almost $40 in sales tax and then a 10% delivery fee or just a 10% handling fee that uh, Davidson's charges if I was to go through Gallery of Guns and have it shipped to my local FFL. Uh, so, you know, in this price point, you can get the more expensive, just standard blackened finish um, 1911 that, that Taurus sells for, oh, I think it's about 500 and, let's see, about $560 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, just had to double check the numbers on that again. Um, if I was to buy the all black version, I'd be looking at $494 for the, the pistol if I did not want the dual tone. Now that's before taxes and fees, so out the door I'm looking at about $544. And when I was comparing prices, I believe that the Rock Island Armory model was about $30 to $40 less for the basic GI model. And uh, you know, some people don't trust the Taurus brand, so they're gonna go buy a Rock Island Armory instead. And that's perfectly fine, I understand that. Um, I know that ATI also makes some really basic entry level 1911s that are about the same price. Uh, not sure if you get all steel with that or if that's a polymer lower with a, a steel slide or if it's an all steel gun and so on. So there's you know a lot of competition out there for, for the 1911. You can get into one you know for just a little bit over $500. You know, you might be able to pick one of these up used for even less.
Um, don't ever pay the MSRP of nearly $700 for this. You should be able to do much better if you go around looking for one. Um, the safety itself run is it's just fine. No problems whatsoever. Again, the gun had, the pistol had no issues at the range when I was using it. Easy to manipulate. It's a nice, nice large safety. Easy to, to take on and off a safe, especially if you walk around the range, say, um, cocked and locked and so on. But uh, overall, I was just very, very impressed with the pistol, with the way that it handled and the, re the, the recoil reduction. The one thing I will say is if you're somebody that's using, that's used to shooting, you know, full-size polymer pistols, um, it is a slight change in the way that it feels in your hand. I know that I, I constantly notice, and it's just because I didn't shoot the gun enough in general, but I did constantly notice the, uh, the beaver tail safety, you know, poking into my hand the whole time. And so it was always like, I could tell it was there much more than a lot of other pistols that I shoot with. And not that it annoys me. I could get used to it. And I know that it's just part of the function of the pistol and it has to be there. But it's one of those things where I always kind of felt like it was always trying to push the gun out of my hand. But again, that's just because I'm, I'm a bit of an inexperienced uh, 1911 style shooter. Okay. Um, the other issue I kind of ran into, and I, I wish that I would have had some sort of extended magazines for this. 45 ACP is so much fun to shoot. Yeah, I know it's the AARP round that people complain about, but it gets the job done. Nonetheless, with only eight rounds when I'm shooting steel, I had to reload quite often just to get through some of the stages of the uh, steel shooting that I was doing. Um, so, you know, definitely get yourself some extended magazines. At least try to maybe get a 10 or a 12 uh, round magazine if possible. If you can get something with some extensions on the bottom or get different magazines in general. Um, the magazines that come with the gun are Brazilian made. They're not Met Gars or anything different like that. They are the tourist uh, source magazines. They do have kind of a nice uh, bluing on them. They are very they're very, they're very rugged. They feel like they're going to hold up to some abuse. Again, why that other magazine had been messed around with, I don't know. Maybe it had some issues and the person using it, you know, fiddled with it a little bit, tried to bend it back to get a little more space into the feed lips and then putting the kink in the top of it. So um, overall, guys, I, I really cannot complain. Um, it is a great pistol. If you could pick one of these up, use or say maybe $400, $450 or less, I would say go ahead and get one. Even though this gun was possibly up to about 15 to 16 uh, years old, um, or, or whatever you had mentioned earlier, it, it, it still holds up really, really well. And you do have a lifetime warranty with the two, which definitely comes in handy. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you could send it in and get it repaired if you needed to. Now, with that being said, do you understand that with Taurus pistols, you know, there can be some issues on some lengthy return time when it comes to um, getting your repairs done and getting the gun back in a timely manner. I've heard some horror stories about that, so that might be one reason to possibly not go the Taurus route. Not that I know if Rock Island Armory is any better or ATI for that matter, if we're talking, you know, bargain basement priced uh, 1911. So anyway, guys, there you go. There you have it. So my experience is the PT-1911 was a very fun gun to shoot, low recoil, easy to manipulate, uh, disassembly, reassembly, a piece of cake once I found the barrel bushing tool, and uh, I'm just really happy with it. So would I consider buying one? Yeah, I think so. I think for the money, for, you know, the, the, the $60, $75 premium that you're going to pay over a Rock Island Armory um, basic 1911 GI model, you know, I like having the, the upgraded sights. I like the extended beaver tail. I love the look of the uh, trigger and the hammer. I definitely think it's something that's worthwhile. So there you go, guys. That is it. That is my take on the PT-1911 45 ACP pistol. Guys, if you like what you see, please like or subscribe. You can check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm also over on GunChannels.com with my podcast called The Caliber Corner. That's a live show we usually do Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. Central Time over on GunChannels.com, as well as all the other content on my channel, guys. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day, have a great weekend, and, and have a great time. As you know, guys, we will talk to you soon. So have fun and be safe. All right, take care. Bye-bye.